Okay, I'm going to assume everybody's grown hellebores, but if not, I'll give you a little background. They're uh, members of the ranunculus family, which includes things like, uh, we may know, like clematis, uh, like peonies. So they're first cousins to those. The majority of them are native in Europe, uh, primarily the Balkan region. Some go as far as England. And there's one species that's a really odd bird native to China. Uh, in the wild, they look nothing like this. The flowers are a fraction of the size. They're generally green, occasionally get a tiny bit of purple. What happened years ago is people began collecting uh, plants in the wild and they began crossing them. And it's only after doing that for probably 80 years that they've been able to come up with the colors, the sizes, and the forms that we have today. So the majority of what we'll see and, and what you probably know is hellebores are sometimes called hellebores orientalis. And they're actually not. They're a bunch of mongrel hybrids because uh, Helleborus orientalis is a single species that is only green or green and white. That's all it ever occurs in. So what you're seeing is a cross of Helleborus orientalis, Helleborus atrorubens, Helleborus viridis, Helleborus croaticus. Uh, there's a whole series, and that's what makes up what we call Helleborus hybridus. Now, typically the thing that you notice about Helleborus hybridus, the flowers all hang down. And that's so in the wild, when they get nights like last night, it won't mess with all its sex parts. Because it's trying to protect itself. If it was up like this that humans want, it would just get zapped and would never set any seed and then the whole uh, populations would die out. So it intentionally does that. So as gardeners, we're like, well, we don't really care about the seed. We like to be able to see the flowers. So over the last uh, really 10 to 15 years, breeders have been breeding to gradually bring those flowers up and out. Now, there's, a, there's another hellebore species that's really important in the hellebore breeding. It's called Helleborus niger. This typically blooms this time of year, so generally a, a Valentine's Day. Niger is called the Christmas rose because it normally starts blooming anywhere from, from Thanksgiving up till first of the year. Niger only occurs in white, but the interesting thing about Niger is it faces completely outwards. Now, it's on the family tree of hellebores. It's way, way off. And for years, it was thought nothing could cross with that. Well, if people try things enough, you eventually break down the genetic barriers. And some of the plants we'll see as we walk are barrier breakdowns when Niger was able to be crossed with other things. Okay, also within hellebores, there are two basically groups. One's called the stemmed hellebores that actually grow up on a stalk and the other are the non-stemmed hellebores. And non-stem means the flower stalks come right out of the ground as opposed to coming out of a stalk that comes out of the ground. So this is a non-stemmed hellebore. If you actually look, the flower stalks come right out of the ground. And this is the most popular type of, of, of hellebores or Linton roses as they're called. So let's walk a little bit and look at some more different ones. These are a stemmed hellebore. So if you look, the flowers actually, this is a permanent stalk. So unlike the one out there, the flowers then come out of the top of the stalk. So the stalk persists from year to year. This is uh, Helleborus argutifolius. Now the stem ones are generally from the tropical islands in the Mediterranean, Corsica, Sardinia, Majorca, those areas. Typically, they're not nearly as winter hardy. So they're fine for us here, but you can't take those up to Chicago. They absolutely won't grow up there. That's why you have to have the uh, ones with no stems up there. So one of the interesting things that happened is somebody was able to cross the stemmed ones with uh, one of the species from Majorca, which has really nice uh, veined leaves, and they came up with this series. And they look a little rough today because of the snow, but these are called the Ibergensis hybrids. And Ibergensis is, whoops, let me shut that off, sorry about that. Uh, Abragensis is a really neat thing because the flowers face completely out, 
colors range from a dark purple to a light purple with a little bit of white. We hadn't got a tremendous amount of color range yet, but the foliage is absolutely incredible. Now, because this was such a weird cross that nature never intended to make, it sets no seed. So a typical hellebore hybridist we looked at, they will seed everywhere and they will come up all over the map. Now, some people love that because you can spread them around, you can share them with friends, but they don't come true with colors. So if you have a really nice purple and it seeds, you're going to get everything from purple to white to mud, mostly mud. You get a lot of mud colors. But that's why people are really liking these because they are completely sterile. You plant one color, you've got one color. Now, you can also divide these, uh, or any hellebores, you can divide. The dividing time is winter when they are dormant. You do not try to divide them in summertime. They will not be happy because hellebores as a group are trying to go dormant in summer. They're trying to go to sleep. Wintertime, the roots are getting made. They're getting ready to wake up. That's really the time you want to divide them. You can actually divide them right now. Once they're in bloom? Yeah, most people don't. Now, you'll be sacrificing a year's bloom, but absolutely. But don't wait too long after that, okay? You can see some of the colors in the hybridus. This particular one we call violet red with a pink edge. And so one of the things that we do is we grow a lot of our own from seed. So in the garden, where we want to save seed, we will group all of one kind together. So all in this area, if we're going to gather seed off this, we will have nothing but violet red with pink edges. And we will get about 50% true to color. If you don't do that, if you just put one here and one there, again, you're going to get sort of a muddy mix. So you get a few good ones, but just not as many. Do the deer like them? Do the deer like them? Ah, great question. Uh, deer typically do not eat anything in the ranunculus family. They really do not like them. So peonies, hellebores are considered about as deer resistant as you can. Yeah. Now, you know, deer get hungry enough, they'll, they'll, they'll take a bite just to see if it's any good, but generally they, they won't bother those. Question. So, yes. What is the scientific term for the stem, stemless? Uh, okay, it's coalescent and acoalescent. Acoalescent means without stem. Coalescent means with stem. It's like cauliflower on the, on the uh, uh, redwood tree. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so here is a, an interesting hybrid. This is a cross between a coalescent and an acoalescent. So this is uh, Hellebores argutifolius, the one we looked at over there, crossed with Niger. Okay. And their names, there's, there's three different names for groups. There's Hellebores Eric Smithii, Hellebores Bellardii, and Hellebores nigercours. And those are all the crosses between the three stem species and Hellebores niger. Now we looked earlier, and I'll show you another one, the Hellebores uh, ibergensis. Uh, that we looked at over there, this, this is a similar cross, except it did not have Hellebores lividus in it. So remember, the one over there had those really nice leaves. This is the same cross, except with dark green leaves. And these are called the Hellebores glandiferensis. Terrible name, it's named after a town in Germany. Glandorf, which is where the cross was made. So that's what Latin people do. They just take it after a name or a person and add a bunch of letters to make it unpronounceable. That's how uh, botanical folks do. But this is a new series called Ice and Roses Red. And there's Ice and Roses White, Red, Coral, all kinds of colors. But the floral show is really pretty amazing. See, that's just been covered in snow and look how nice it still looks. Yeah. So, so for, for garden value, unless you want the seeding, in my opinion, these uh, uh, glandiferensis and the ibergensis hybrids are really quite extraordinary. How long do they live? How long do they live? That's a great question. This one, right? this one is about three years old. 